Hi all, today we are going to discuss about underground cables. So before going to the underground cables, till now we have studied the overhead transmission line. In the overhead transmission line, the conductors will be laid like this. This is a tower and there will be some adjacent tower will be there like this. So here the conductors will be hanging. So here the conductors will be hanging between these two towers. So the overhead transmission line, you can see they are laid throughout the land. So this overhead transmission line they occupied so much of land that is the first disadvantage second disadvantage is they are exposed to atmosphere they are exposed to the atmospheric conditions and the but there is having some advantage also the advantage of the overhead lines is we can directly carry the bare conductors so there is no insulation required above the conductors the insulation will be required only at the towers where it is hanging only here the insulators are used to insulate it or isolate it with respect to the earth so automatically the cost of the transmission and will be overhead transmission and will be very less but the only disadvantage of this is it occupies more land and some places we may get the problem of the clearance with respect to the ground like highly populated areas or the railway crossings or those type of applications now coming to the underground cables if you are taking this as your ground the cables are laid below the ground so if you want to lay any conductor below the ground automatically we have to provide proper protection to this cable first one we have to provide the insulation and along with the insulation sometimes during the excavation or any work is going on so they may just spoil this cable so that may lead to problem in the cable so that's why the proper care should be taken care so automatically the cable will have the multiple layers when multiple layers are there automatically the cost of the cable will increase the only disadvantage of the cable is cost is more whereas for the overhead transmission line the cost is less but the disadvantage is wherever the highly populated areas or railway crossing these type of locations we cannot go for the overhead lines because they occupy more space and more clearance is required for them so let us try to summarize what are the advantages and disadvantages of underground cables so the advantages of underground cables are they are less affected due to external atmospheric conditions such as lightning strokes so whenever the lightning stroke comes that will directly fall on the transmission line unlike the case of underground cables they are below the ground the lightning or the rain or storms these are not going to affect your underground cables and next one the low maintenance cost the overhead transmission line frequently you have to do the maintenance such as the branches of a tree will go on touch it we have to frequently check the insulators which are connected whether they are proper or not whether the sag is proper or not all those maintenance problems will not be there in cables because once laid they will remain for long time then there is a less chance of the faults there is a chance that overhead transmission line may cut and they may fall on the ground the chances of the faults are more like the birds will come and touch the transmission lines so these type of problems are not there in the case of cables very less problems will be there so, and next one is the better appearance and occupies less space that is a better advantage now coming to the disadvantage the disadvantage is greater installation cost and in the case of cables because if you are taking a cable the adjacent conductors are kept very near to each other so automatically as the distance between the conductors is less so the capacitance will be more when the capacitance is more the charging current will be more in the case of cables when compared to the transmission line that is a disadvantage and it is difficult to locate the faults if the fault happens in a cable it will be very difficult to locate where is the fault and diagnose the fault and there is one more problem is also there if you want to make the joints or connections in between we cannot make the joints in between the cable we can only make at the junction boxes where there will be a manhole through the manhole we can go inside and make the connections remaining places it is impractical so because of these limitations that means high initial cost very difficult to locate the fault and more capacitor charging currents the underground cables are used only where it is impractical to use the overhead lines because overhead lines are much more cheaper when compared to cables so the examples where it is used is thickly populated areas where sufficient clearance cannot be provided for the overhead transmission lines such as the distribution systems then railway crossings wherever you want to do the railway crossings already electrified line will be there so keeping a overhead line above that sometimes may not be feasible so in that case what they do they can use the underground cables then 
around the plants and substations so let us take for example hydroelectric power plant generally the power plant will be below the ground level so we have to carry the power from the power plant which is generated at 30 kv or 20 kv that will be transmitted to the nearby substation so to carry to the nearby substation we always prefer the cables because we cannot lay the overhead lines there similar is the case in the substation for making some connections in the substation also we go for underground cables and Connection to the equipment from the switchboard. From the switchboard, if you want to make the connection to the machines or all the equipment, there also we always go for the underground cables or the cables. So, the type of the cable used depends on the working voltage and service requirements. But if you are using the cable, so the cable must fulfill the following requirements. The first one is the conductor should have high conductivity and it should be more flexible. The conductor should carry required current without any type of overheating and proper thickness of insulation to give high degree of safety at the operating voltage. Because we know the cable with construction will be like this, there will be a conductor and there will be an insulation. It will be directly below the ground, that means surrounding is the ground only. So, the ground is at 0 volts and the conductor is some, let us assume some V1 volts. So, you have to provide the proper thickness of the insulation so that the dielectric breakdown will not happen or the leakage currents from your conductor the earth will be minimum and along with that whatever the insulation is provided this insulation should not absorb the moisture that is another characteristic of the cable that is required so you have to provide the proper protective layers about that then the cable must be protected with suitable mechanical protection so that the cable will not damage during laying out and sometimes whenever you are doing some other maintenance or repairing work, the people may dig the ground. In that case also your cable should not damage. So, and next one is the material that is used should be chemically inactive. It should not be chemically acting with respect to the surroundings because that will create the problem. So, let us see what is the general construction of a cable. So, the cable will contain a conductor to carry the current. So, this should be insulated from the ground. So, one insulating material will be there. So, above the insulating material, because the insulating material may have the property of absorbing the moisture and there is a chance of mechanical damage to this insulation. In order to protect it, we go for a sheathing which is a lead sheath. So, above the lead sheath, in order to protect it from damage as well as rusting and other things, we provide a layer called as a bedding. So, above the bedding, we provide one more layer called as armoring which is used to protect your cable from mechanical damage due to digging or while laying. And this armoring will be protected from getting corroded or rusted by using a serving above the armoring. So, here you have to remember this bedding and armoring may or may not be used in some type of cables. If you know that your cable is not going to be laid underground, your cable is only used for connecting from your switchboard to your motor. So, in that case, we need not go for the bedding and armoring. So, these may or may not be there. Let us see in detail of each of these layers now. So, first starting with the core or conductor. So, the conductors are made up of stranded tinned copper or aluminum to provide the flexibility to the cable. Because whenever you are doing the stranding, it becomes more flexible because cable should be more flexible while laying. To get it, we go for the stranded con conductors and generally the tin is applied above the copper in order to make it not interact with the surrounding insulating material. So, we are going to see this in details in insulating materials. So, the number of cores depends on the service for which they are operated. We can go for either single core, two core or three core or even four core depending on the application. Now, coming to the insulation. So, each core is provided with a suitable thickness of insulation. The thickness depends on the operating voltage. Commonly used materials are paper and varnished cambric vulcanized Indian rubber, polyvinyl chloride or PVC and XLPE. These are some of the materials which are used in practice. Now, coming to the metal sheath, in order to protect the cable from moisture, gases, acids or alkalines, a metallic sheath of lead or aluminum is provided over the insulation. In olden days, they used to use the lead because it is very soft material and flexible. Nowadays, they are going for the aluminum because aluminum weight is very less. So, the weight of the cable decreases because that is also the major concern. Now, above this one, we provide a fibrous material like jute or hessian type to protect the metallic sheath against corrosion and from mechanical injury due to armoring. So, what is armoring? So, armoring is one or two layers of galvanized steel wire or steel tape is used to protect the cable from mechanical injury while lying it and during the course of handling. 
that means sometimes the people dig the cable and these type of things so armoring may or may not be done in some type of cables because wherever you feel that that much rough handling will not be there we need not waste the money for armoring that is the reason now above the armoring one more layer will be there or the final layer so in order to protect the armoring from atmospheric conditions a layer of fibrous material similar to the bedding is used over the armoring so let us see different types of insulating materials for cables so the property of the insulating material should be it should have high dielectric strength to avoid breakdown of cable then high insulation resistance to avoid the leakage current it should have high mechanical strength it should be non inflammable it should not be affected by acids or alkalines to avoid any chemical reaction or chemical action and next one it should be non hygroscopic non hygroscopic means it should not absorb the moisture so what will happen if it absorb the moisture let us take for example i am taking a conductor above this there is a insulation it is connected to the ground so now whenever it is exposed to the ground when this exposure the absorbs the moisture so two consequences will happen the first one will be because of absorption of the moisture thus resistance the insulation resistance will decrease when the insulation resistance decreases the leakage current will start passing from your conductor to your core so conductor to your conductor to the ground so this increases or the leakage current increases and the second one is the dielectric strength the dielectric strength of the material decreases when the dielectric strength of the material decreases the amount of voltage per centimeter it can withstand will decrease and there is a chance that after some time after absorbing more moisture it will start acting as a conductor that means it will lose its insulating property and the dielectric breakdown may happen this is the reason for this one so now coming to different type of materials that are used the first most easiest type of the material that can be used is rubber so it is made from the latex of the rubber tree or from oil products generally the value of epsilon will, r will be from 2 to 3 and the dielectric strength is 30 kv per mm and the resistivity of this dielectric is 10 to the power of 17 ohm centimeter all these properties are very good but it is having so many disadvantages also the disadvantage is it cannot be operated above 38 degree centigrade because it will start melting or molding into different shapes if the temperature is increased then it absorbs the moisture very easily and it is very soft so it can be damaged very easily whenever some weight is applied on the cable it changes its shape it deforms to some other shape so that creates the problem so that's why rubber is practically not used generally we go for vulcanized indian rubber that is called as vir so it is a pure rubber which is mixed with the mineral materials such as zinc oxide real lead and 3 to 5% of the sulfur so then it is rolled into the thin sheets and applied on the conductor and then what we do we heat up to 150 degree centigrade so it is applied on the conductor then heated up to 150 degree centigrade so it will melt and deform into the required shape then it is cooled down so this process is called as vulcanization process so the advantage of this is it has better mechanical strength weather resistance than the pure rubber the drawback is it reacts with the copper due to the sulfur that is mixed with that and so hence the conductor should be tinned in order to avoid this problem otherwise the chemical action takes place and the conductor get eroded so the advantage is the dielectric strength is 15 kv per mm and this material is generally used for low and moderate voltage cables now coming to the next type that is impregnated paper this is the most commonly used material for the cables so this is chemically pulped paper made from wood chippings and impregnated with some compound such as paraffin and naphthenic materials so the advantage is low cost it has low capacitance high dielectric strength and high insulation resistance so all the parameters are very good it is approaching near to the ideal value but there is one disadvantage of this material the disadvantage is it is hygroscopic that means it easily absorbs the moisture so the dielectric strength decreases drastically so we cannot be left open to the atmosphere because it absorbs the moisture easily so that is the reason it can be used only where no joints are made in between the connections there should be no joint in between because from there it will absorb the moisture and wherever the ends are there they are covered with wax or tar to avoid the exposure to the atmosphere wherever you cut and open it you have to immediately cover with some covering such as the wax or the tar to avoid the exposure to atmosphere otherwise remaining all characteristics are very good so there is one more material called as polyvinyl chloride or pvc 
it is obtained from polymerization of acetylene and is in the form of a white powder. So, this white powder should be converted to a solid form. So, in order to combine to the solid form, it is compounded with materials known as plasticizers. So, which are liquids with high boiling point. So, then it is combined with those materials, then the required PVC is made. The advantage of this is it is inert to oxygen and alkalines and acids. So, it is mainly useful in the places such as the chemical factories or where chemically more it is exposed to the atmosphere. In those cases, it is better. And second advantage of PVC is it can withstand very high temperatures up to 75 degrees centigrade. So, generally this PVC is employed for medium and low voltage domestic lighting and power installations where it is exposed to the atmosphere because it does not absorb the moisture that is a major advantage of PVC. And one more recently developed method is cross link polyethylene which is called as XLPE. So, the advantage is the operating temperature is very high, it can operate up to 100 degrees centigrade and it is having better thermal dissipation properties. The heat that is produced in the cable can be easily dissipated to atmosphere and the weight is also very less. And this type of material is generally used in high frequency applications that means in electronic circuits. Nowadays, they are using for the electrical applications also and they are used up to 33 kV. Up to 33 kV, we can go for XLPE cables. Okay. I hope the basics of the cables are completely clear to you. So, if you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.